We see here the sort of everyday job our linemen have been doing for many years with the confidence and pride of skilled workers. With safety too, so long as each man remembers to apply the rules he has been taught. One man uses his hand line to raise the necessary tools and material. Here is another case where a combination of unsafe practices brings about an accident. For example, when finished with the hand line, the lineman snaps it to his body belt instead of tying it to a cross arm. The other end of the hand line is not fastened at the foot of the pole. The foreman starts for the other end of the line where more of his men are working. The truck is parked close to the job and in backing moves nearer to the pole. The wind blows the loose hand line against the moving truck. Although the safety strap which holds the lineman to the pole is in good condition, as found later, it finally breaks. installer has rerun several drop wires and is about to remove the old ones. The pole involved in this accident has a street light circuit attached to it as well as several telephone drop wires. He decides first to remove the three dead drop wires running diagonally across the street. Remember that these scenes are careful reproductions of actual accidents. Nothing has been added for dramatic effect. The action is based upon an accurate knowledge of all that occurred. apparently intends to test the pole, but decides it isn't necessary, forgetting that safety rules are made for his protection. The top of the pole is supported by the two drop wires on the left, pulling against the street light wire on the right. Here again, the drop wire should be removed at the house first permitting the usual pike pole test. The power wires above are not attached to this old pole. His suspicions are well founded because this pole below the ground line has rotted away. Possibly he is deceived by the pole brackets and assumes that the strand is attached to the pole. We see that it is not attached.
As he cuts these drop wires, he fails to realize that he is removing the support from one side of the pole. By some trick of fate, he decides to go around and remove the bracket on the opposite side. The shifting of his weight is just enough to start the pole.